Good evening. I would like to welcome you to the Iowa State University College of Business Fall 2011 Commencement Ceremony. During my time at Iowa State, I met many of you at the Student Services Office. You might remember me saying, What did you need to see your advisor about? After classes ended last spring, things really changed. I ended last semester using this device to speak for me and started the semester. Being able to talk. You want to talk about a big change. Let me give you a little history of my last four years. Four years ago, I was working as a fully licensed financial advisor making a comfortable living. While meeting with a client, I caught a virus which caused my voice to become hoarse. Within a few weeks, the only sound I could make was a whisper. It didn't stop there. My voice continued to get weaker to the point where I became mute. I couldn't build my business and eventually lost my job. I tried everything. Doctors, therapists, speak, acupuncture and prayer. Still, no voice and no job. I'll be honest with you here, I was low. I sunk into depression. I had gone from a comfortable living to being disabled in the blink of an eye. I applied for social security disability to survive. I couldn't talk on the phone, use the drive through window at a bank, or the drive through at McDonald's. And I have to admit, I love their cherry pies. I couldn't even talk to my family. They did their best to read my lips, but sometimes the message wasn't getting through. I remember a time when I was trying to tell my family about a story I'd read in the Dallas County newspaper. To them, it looked like I was talking about dancing noodles. As they read my lips, it looked to... I was speaking with another person and I was asking their personal opinion. As they read my lips, it looked like I was talking about something about the prince of abortion. While these examples are extreme, it was frustrating for me and the people I was trying to communicate to. For someone who made his living with my voice, it was a big change. Through the services of vocational rehabilitation and the generous grants and scholarships that I received, I was able to attend Iowa State University. I want to talk about a change, my age and going back to college. At the beginning of each semester, I would meet with each of my professors and we would discuss, using a white, white dry erase board and a marker, what I would need to do to accommodate me in my class. It wasn't easy, but they were always willing to accommodate my situation. Whether there was a requirement in the class to do a class presentation, as you guys well know, they were always willing to offer me another way to get credit. But as I told them, I wouldn't. I couldn't avoid speaking in the real world, so I wanted to do the presentations. And thank you to all of you who sat in on those presentations and allowed me to stumble my way through. So I started my life at Iowa State University taking classes and working at the undergraduate programs office where I had the opportunity to meet a lot of you. As time went on, my methods of communications improved. I went from a dry erase board to a PDA with a speech program and then, the, then an iPad with the speech program that I use for conversations and class presentations. I'll always remember some of the looks that I received from people when they heard my voice through the computer. Everything from the occasional laughter 
to shock and amazement. It was always funny when, when I was talking to somebody to the computer system, to the computer voice, and they'd yell back at me, I'm not deaf, I just can't talk. This past summer, the biggest change had happened to me. Through a referral, I was given the name of a physician in Cleveland who had successfully treated people with my diagnosis. The treatment started with me gargling and making humming sounds. In a matter of 15 minutes or so, I went from not being able to speak at all to, be able, to being able to, to, to combine two letters together, M and me, E. I could say me. At this point, I knew I would be talking again and started to break down crying. Within an hour of treatment, I went from saying me to yelling at a person seven stories below. For the first time in three and a half years, I could hear my own voice, even through all the tears and emotions. One of the things I was told to do was not stop talking for the next few days. And as many of you know, I haven't shut up since May. Before I continue, I'd like to, to take a moment to thank those who helped me along my Iowa State adventure. I'd like to, to thank Lynette and Christy at Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation, John Hirschman and the entire Disability Resource Team, Dr. Kopernall and the entire staff at Undergraduate Programs Office, Kathy Whelan and the staff in Career Services, and all the professors I had. I name you individually, but that would take far too long. And my family. especially my sons, Caleb and Jared. Yes, I had to put your name in there. Without the, ass the assistance and support of these people, I wouldn't be standing where I am today. Thank you very much. Through all the experiences over the last few years, I've learned some things. First, no matter what changes come along, and we can expect quite a few regardless of who we are. Graduates, parents, friends, faculty, staff. Never, never give up. With the support of family and friends, find the resources you need and follow your dreams. No matter what changes come along, how you react to them is what really matters. Second, we need to treat people with respect. During my drive to the Cleveland Clinic, I stopped at a gas station to get some gas, obviously. Pumps were all prepay. I went in like I'd done many times before and handed the attendant the cash, held up four fingers, as in pump number four, pointed to my car. The attendant said, what do you need? Again, I repeated my, my previous actions. The attendant replied again, no, you have to say it. I gestured the need for a, a, a pen and paper, wrote down what it was that I needed. He took the paper, read it, set it down, said, no, you have to read it. You have to say it. After having another attendant step in, I finally made my purchase. While this is an extreme example, people are treated like this every day. Each of us, as we go through our lives, need to, rem to remember to treat others, regardless of differences, with respect and defend those that are not able to defend themselves. Another thing I learned was while having the finer things in life is great, life can and will change, sometimes in an instant. Even though the careers we all want and need are important, there are far more important things in life. Family, friends, and faith. 
A quote from Barbara Bush sums it up well. At the end of our life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, not winning one more verdict or closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with husband or wife, a friend, a child, or a parent. This does not mean, however, that you should move back in with your parents and stay there forever. In closing, I have one final thought. After the doctor restored my voice, he asked me, what would you like to say now that you have your voice back? I didn't think about school, work, graduation, car payments, none of that. The one thing I wanted to express the most was to tell my family how much I loved them. Thank you.